Okay, green light. Uh, we should be racing again. Three lap sprint of, uh, of the track. Uh, let's have a look. Watch for... Um, I'd imagine Michaela Rimbus will be up amongst them. Uh, they drop the gates and away they do go. So let's have a look. Uh, come down to the first corner, the Pirelli corner there, and Rimbus is in front, uh, as we would have in anticipated. Uh, and the resplendent pink jersey uh, goes to the lead. Uh, they'll, let's have a look. They'll sort themselves out with Rimbus in front. And in behind them looks like uh, Darcy Forrest. Darcy Forrest indeed holding down the two spot. Then it's neck and neck for third and fourth. Addison Orr and Zayla Hayward going toe to toe, Dave. Yes, that's exactly how it looks. Uh, Michaela doing a really good job. She was wonderful in that last event she rode in, uh, in amongst the boys and, uh, and served it right up to them uh, in a class of her own just at the minute. Uh, leading out and leading out pretty nicely indeed. Uh, Addison Orr's not that far away. Amelia Cross, Charlie's uh, Foley, uh, Zala Haywood, as you mentioned, as they go down the hill. Uh, this is the uh, first lap of three. So it'll be a pretty smart event and uh, they'll be over and done with. So if you're in the pits uh, and you're up next, uh, which would be... Uh, It'll be the... 85cc big wheel, is it or not? Yes, 85cc big wheels. You, you need to be, be getting ready for your lap four lapper. Grid because they're uh, com considerably shortened events for the last round, and this is only three laps, and they're down uh, to uh, probably the best part of half a lap already. So you should make a move towards the starting grid if you're uh, in the next event. And... Uh, as we said, uh, everything's been shortened for the last one. So 110 Michaela Rimbus for the Coastal Motorcycle Club uh, in a class of her own. Over here. Look at this. Oh, yeah, she's gone. Well and truly checked out, packed the bags, and has taken off. Coming around that bottom corner, coming off Southwest Highway, we catch up with second place Darcy Forrest on the 166. At last guess, it was just on a second, maybe about eight tenths. And now looks to have blown out considerably, almost on 1,000 to 1,000. Yeah, I'd say borderline two seconds, the difference between P1 and two. But Darcy not giving up, bounces the way through and into that twisty turning section in the middle of the track. Yes, twisty turning is exactly what it is. It's kind of a uh, significant S bend uh, and then back around, take a jump right away to the far southwestern corner. Nice big left-hander and back at us immediately now. So here we go uh, with the Rimbus in front uh, in the pink jersey doing it nicely. No change in the order. Expect there probably won't be for a while. That'll be Darcy Forrest, Addison Orr, Zala Hayward, uh, Amelia Cross, Charlie's Foley and Lily Hunt. That's the way they circulate on the circuit. Uh, lap two or three. So uh, when we go back around, we should have the last lap board. That was uh, not particularly great. Uh, mechanical sympathy out the window in the final round of the of the, uh, the racing. Isn't that how it normally goes? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all hates to home. That's what we talk about. And uh, that's exactly what's happening. Our race leader checked right out of the motor and uh, got a nice handy break uh, halfway down the hill. The others are just on the top here. Got a, uh, a right-hander right down the bottom near the... Highway comes back up the hill, so you go down the hill, up the hill, down the hill, round the hill. It's all around the hill and all It's the all hills. around the hill, isn't yeah, it? Well, it's... you're on the hill, so I suppose you've got to go one way or the other, <laughs> up or down. I'll tell you what, from our, uh, from our position up here, as the sun's starting to make its way towards the horizon, it is yeah. a very pretty view uh, almost, out across the coastal view, flats. Eh? Not bad, hey? Yeah, not quite as good as, uh, as some of the views I've commentated at, but... Uh, you know, this is a, a really nice view across to uh, the uh, western side of the country. Uh, towards the ocean, what have we got over there? Rockingham and uh, that, those sort of areas, Safety Bay. There's a nice big building uh, that I've never noticed before right over here on the right. And I'm guessing that's a high rise at uh, Rockingham Beach. Potentially, it looks like it may well be. I'm looking across and I can see what looks like the port. But anyway, let's turn our attention back to the racing. We've meandered our way through uh, enough. Let's check it out. This is the third and final moto for the 85cc girls division. We ride with the 166 running in P2. That's Darcy Forrest wheeling it around the right-hander. Looking pretty composed. Rimbus, as we keep mentioning, has well and truly taken off. 
In fact, I think she might even, I uh, know, oh I was going to say come up a slower rider, but that's not the case. She comes back around the start finish point last lap, homeward bound, done a really, really good job. The Michaela girls <laughs> have done very, very well indeed. Uh, Rim, uh, Michaela and, uh, and Michaela Rimbus and the other Rimbus girls All three have done of them. a Michaela, super duper job right through the day. Yeah. And uh, this is no exception. Uh, she is homeward bound. I'm uh, sure that uh, she'll get a rousing reception when she gets back into the pitch for a job particularly well done. 166, that is the bike of uh, Darcy Forrest. Uh, in second, then we go back to third. I'd imagine that 323, three, Amelia Crossner, Addison Orr, uh, Zala Haywood, Charlie, Charlize Foley, Amelia Cross back in sixth and rounding out. Lily Hunt, that's the way to circulate towards the checkered flag. So everybody getting on to their final lap now. As we follow on, Rimbus making her way back up towards the top of the hill for the final time over the rollers. Flat stick pinned in top gear. Wheel it up and you'll drop down on the approach into the tabletop. Clears it with ease. Rimbus just putting on an absolute clinic. Best lap time for 2 minutes, 22.12. The last lap was a 2 minute 23. She can afford to ease off. She's got about 12 and a half seconds between herself and P2 as we watch her scoot away across Southwest Highway for the very last time today on this bike, in this category. We'll see her come out on the 110 machine in another moto in this final round. Things definitely getting the hour count up with her at the bars. Yeah, it doesn't like continuation of uh, circulation on a, uh, on a track to get yourself uh, in the right frame of mind uh, for sleep later on. OK, so uh, we're looking for uh, our race leader, Michaela Rimbus, right in the uh, tricky part of the circuit for the last time today in this particular class and won't be far off a checkered flag. Uh, goes back around, up over that jump, and away we do go for the balance of the, of the moto. Coming back uh, in full view, in behind the timing tower, and around the Pirelli corner, she swings for a checkered flag. Good work. Race leader, race winner, 110, Michaela Rimbus. Dar uh, Darcy Forrest will run second, Addison Orr third, Zala Haywood in fourth, Charlie Foley fifth, Amelia Cross sixth, rounding out Lily Hunt. That's all she wrote for that particular class. Event 22 in your program. Next up, we are going to see the 85cc big wheels, 12 to under 16. They will run a four-lap sprint. And this is going to be impressive because that is a chock-full gate of 85cc riders ready to be unleashed. Yeah, I'm reckoning uh, the best part of what looks at like there's two right on the end uh, vacant. So I'm going to say 35 in this field. Uh, and 35 on that 120 metre run uh, into the first corner, the Pirelli corner there, is going to be a very, very uh, important part of this moto because in four laps, you've got no chance of coming from behind. If you're not up the pointy end early, you're definitely not going to finish in the points uh, from uh, one to four or five, that's for sure. Hello, what have we had, one off? Not 100% sure exactly what's going on, but I can see the Medicaid. Yeah out on track, just stopping. It's either, uh, it's trying to spot the number. I think it may be the 307 of Zala Hayward. Not sure anyway, she's gonna hop on the, uh, yeah, I think you're right too. Gonna hop into oh. the, uh, the little uh, ATV, work her way back. Less than ideal, hopefully, uh, the 331 rider Charlize Foley is okay. Uh, yeah. I was told fairly late in the piece that she took a tumble there on that left hander. But we are going to turn our attention back to this racked and stacked gate of 85cc big wheel riders. We'll crank some tunes and we'll get into it.
Okay, we've got a green flag, so uh, a race is imminent. Uh, some sparks will fly here early. It is a four lap dash, and uh, we should be ready to go racing very shortly. We're going to funnel them from about 35 down into one. They're going to be so jam packed, you can throw a blanket over the entire lot. The gates drop, and away we go. The dust flies, and they haven't even hit the main part of the track. Two bright yellow helmets up on the high line, but let's check it out. It's the 44 of Jake Rumens leading us out through turn one. He's under fire, though. Has he got what it takes to hold off the 929 of Leah Rimbus, Dave? Time's going to tell. In third place, the triple one, Sonny Pelicano, acquitting himself well. Hard on the gas, looking to get up around the inside, locks it up. Fires it off the inside line, fades it out wide, tries to cut off Rimbus, but couldn't get it done. He has held the position, but Jake Rumens is about to disappear like a gorilla through the mist. Yeah, well, I think a, uh, a start's going to be very important here, and Rimbus got a rip or two, so uh, the sparks will fly. Uh, there's plenty of dust down there, so vision's going to be an issue. Down the hill and up they come, and uh, Rumens in front on the Yamaha. He's a blue crew racer, and doing it nicely in front now, uh, under some pump. Who we got coming behind? Uh, just miss it, but I fancy it's going to be uh, Clayton Freight, perhaps. Uh, Sonny Pelicano, Kay Pratt, one of those, uh, is there. And also uh, Leah Rimbus, I think you'll find, was up amongst them as well. So they go down the hill, out of you, have no idea what's going there with the dust. Looks like we've got some problems. The Medicaid is on the hustle as I'm also looking down and I'm seeing a young rider pushing their Yamaha uh, off right in front of our commentary position. But let's catch them as we look down, down the hill and try and find, this looks like the battle for P2, or, or rather P3. I see Rimbus on that 929 machine. She is being hunted down. Trying to spot a, uh, a number at this range is a little bit of a test of the eyesight, and mine's not, none too good. So a waved yellow. And it looks like Rumens is still your race leader on the number 44 machine with the red number plate. Navigates his way through P1. He is being hotly contested by Sonny Pelicano on the triple one. Rimbus about looked like she was about to fall victim to P4. That was going to be Patrick Butler looking to put a move on her. Here we go. The 929 machine locks it up into the high line. <laughs> very, very smart riding there from Rimbus. She's managed to fakey the number 68 of Patrick Butler out of any advances as it now gets hot and heavy right in front of us. Watching the battle with Jack Backer, Declan Caldwell and Luca Romano in the 10 spot. And someone's gone down. Two bikes have been mixed up in it. Yeah, there's and there's another here. two. There's this is over here. Uh, carnage. Uh, we've got two exiting the uh, main straightaway there. Yellow flags. Declan Caldwell on the number 35 got mixed up in this bender out on the left hander, wheels the bike around. Yes, there's a little bit happening here. Couple off on both sides of the circuit. No damage done, uh, except probably a little bit of a uh, uh, heated um, situation under the helmet, but no damage done physically. That's the important part. Only mental anguish for the riders. So they sort themselves out. Rumens is still in front, Pelicano charging very hard and Lee Rins, we cannot speak highly enough. What a fantastic job she is doing. Chasing hard and really working over time to stay with him. Uh, Patrick Butler, I'll expect him to come through, but four laps, very hard to come too far from too far back in four laps. Best lap time belongs to the 44 machine of Jake Rumens with a 207.179 to his name. Very hard to compete with that. Sonny Pelicano's done well in the triple one machine with a two minute, eight second lap time. He'll be proud of that. But that mixer on two different corners with two different bikes has really bitten a couple of riders. Declan Coldwell and Kai Pratt got stitched up here on this fast and aggressive left hand berm. So we watch on as Jake Rumens reels off another lap.
Still leading out Sonny Pelicano. Yeah, this, now they start to close up. I think this will be Butler in third, who's got past Rimbus. Let's just have a look at the number. Yes, it is. So the action will be right in that last lap. Now, that's when the uh, sparks will really fly. These two guys starting to, to load up uh, and get a go on. So Rimbus is going to be under some pressure. Uh, Rimbus looking pretty tidy. Butler, Pelicano charging hard. So Patrick Butler got up around Leah Rimbus. She gave that spot on her 929. We watch them circulate in front of us and watching on the screens, it's very, very difficult to spot, not just on the screens, but actually in real life. Wow, I'll tell you what, that dust is an issue, isn't it? Check that out. <coughs> you can hardly see the riders down the bottom end of the circuit. That's really tricky. Uh, I'm not sure where we're at with that, but uh, at this stage, we've got a yellow flag out. Not sure what's happened there. Uh, rider off. Over here on the circuit. Yep. So, uh, being a bit tricky. And now, just the sheer volume of dust proving to be a massive issue for riders and officials alike as we yeah. continue on. Butler started again on board with Pelicano back in second, third. That's a really good tussle now. Oh, now here we go. Is. Watch them as they duck in and out of view. These guys, you can see Sonny Pelicano in the yellow helmet fighting hard on that triple one machine. They wheel around through that right hander. So we follow on the gap. It's yeah. held together by an elastic band. It gets bigger, it gets smaller under braking. And Looks like they're neck and neck, and it looks like Pelicano might have lost the position, but here he is. He pops out in front, holds on to that two yeah, spot. No, no, no. Butler up the inside, chucked him out. Look at that. <laughs> and Pelicano not to be outdone. He snaps it back. My goodness, this is a battle and a half, a battle royale across the start finish line. They're on the last lap. Has Pelicano got what it takes to take back what was his? Or has Butler got everything in his pocket? Butler on the gas gas, looking to fire it hard on that berm. They get around lap traffic. Pelicano's fallen back a little bit. He's gonna lock up the rear, run the inside line, look for the drive, but can't make it happen. Butler had too much of a gap. We've seen Pelicano push that fade across the track and wow. Butler has well and truly checked out. He's managed to grab himself three bikes just in that last two corner complex. And he's also clocked in with the quickest lap time, stitching that one away from Rumens. Was a 206.775, almost a half a second quicker than our guy running on track in P1. Yeah, Patrick Butler peeled out a 206 then. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a, that's really good in a, in a circuit like this. Butler at a 2.06. Uh, we've got Rumens in front at a 2.07 and Sonny Pelicano at a 2.08. So they stand as they go now. Uh, it's all about uh, the run of the chequered flag. It was a four-lap sprint. Uh, Rumens still in front, but he is charging. Patrick Butler coming hard from the clouds. Uh, it's a matter of whether he gets close enough. Uh, and after that, it's just a matter of how we get on. So he did away with Sonny Pelicano, but Pelicano's not giving up. That gap has grown, but this is the final lap, the final time these riders will run in this category today. They're racing for sheep stations and taking it super serious. We follow on with your race leader, Jake Rumens. No one's been able to touch him all race long into the final corner, and Jake Rumens is going to finish his day with a win to his name on that red number plate. Oh, and Butler's not too happy either, I've got to say. He chased like Billy and just didn't oh. quite make it. Uh, Pelicano ran third. What a nice ride by the three of them. But uh, as I said here at the start of the race, four lap sprint, Rumens got a great start, and Butler didn't. Pelicano not so bad. And at the end of the day, that's what it came down to. Let's watch the interaction in the exit shoot. These guys are all over each other. How's that? Butler goes up, fist bumps the winner, Jake Rumens. Rumens and Pelicano are sharing a bit of a moment there. But man, oh man, these guys gave their absolute all. They'll leave their machines in Park Fermo. 
for the predetermined period of time. Just in case anybody wants to make a protest, etc., etc. Yep. Just a recap, we had uh, Jake Rubens took the race out. Patrick Butler, who charged very hard uh, towards the end. Sonny Pelicano, Lee Rimbus. Again, I sing the, the praises of the Rimbuses uh, all day. And what a fine effort she finished for. Connor Weiss, uh, Caden Freight, Chance Napier, Jack Backer, Lucas Romano. Rounding out the top ten. Great work by all these riders. Rider Matthews Taylor. That was a wonderful race. Uh, race 23, uh, just the four laps. And I believe we move on to 50cc auto, and they have three little laps to go, so that's going to be uh, another absolute sprint. Don't forget, riders, you must return your transponders once you have finished racing. You can return them in the blue box under the timing trailer. Please make sure there's usually a, uh, a box in the exit chute as well as you come off track. But please, we do remind you, don't leave with your transponder. We are off and racing for the final time with the 50cc autos. And out in front, Ryder O'Grady leads out Evan Foley, Mason Cleary in third, John Fitzgerald in fourth with Bam Hill. What a name. Bringing it home in fifth place on that uh, 197 machine. Watch them get all kinds of mixed up. The, this is a big, big field. Here we go. On the 7-1-1, that's Evan Foley fighting it out for P3. It for P1, was uh, right? Fred Ingham off the bike. <laughs> <laughs> it, went, it was Ouch. all on one side of the bike. Should have come off. Oh, there's one underneath it. A uh, little bit of exuberance here. And uh, we've got one sitting on the track there underneath the bike. Probably not too happy with the proceedings. But uh, that Evan Foley, uh, right in front of us there, uh, hit the jump, it bucked him, and he finished up on one side of the bike, somehow managed to stay on and get back on. So uh, we might, you know, we've got the yellow flag, we've got a uh, ambulance flag, so we're just not sure. 
uh, what the outcome of this will be. Look, as um, the race continues, you can see the riders have spread themselves out down in the bottom of the track there all along Southwest Highway. These 50cc autos, they don't hang around for anything. Ryder O'Grady was leading out Evan Foley with Mason Cleary in third. As we attend to our rider in front of our commentary position, we watch on as our lead group navigate their way through that sweeping left-hander. The little 50s, they get a whole heap of air coming around the final corner for the second to last time. They've only got a little, I believe it's a three lap sprint. So now riders are gonna have to really knuckle down and realize that this is a yellow flag sector. We've managed to clear the rider off the track, but the ambulance buggy is still there on the sidelines. So they're out of harm's way. Racing resumes. It's clean and green, and we see a move for third place. The 7-Eleven gets around. Just about made it happen on Ryder O'Grady. And uh, always makes me uh, wonder, you know, these little guys. They're very, very keen races, but a yellow flag. <laughs> Half the time, I don't think they even see them. Fortunately, the uh, first aid people managed to pick the rider up and get, it, get him or her off the track by a whisker, yeah, exactly. Uh, averted any real problems because I could see something uh, happening there. So at the moment, John Fitzgerald leads out. Uh, the fastest rider on the circuit, according to this, is uh, Caleb Tat. Then we go to Ryder O'Grady, Evan Foley, Bam Hill. Yeah, I like Bam, that's good enough. Bam Hill. It's awesome, isn't it? That's, that's a, a racer's name. That is a racer's name. Quickest lapper out there, a 153.34. That belongs to Caleb Tat. He's featured real heavily in just about every single race he's been in. Oh, I believe he has, yeah. He's done a really good job. He's, uh, he is a now racer. He goes out and goes as hard as he possibly can in the first moto as he does in the last moto, in the first lap as he does in the last lap. And uh, at the end of the day, if you're that, that way inclined, you deserve everything that you get as far as accolades are concerned and trophies and everything else that's, uh, that's associated with it. So uh, good on him. He's going great. Uh, there are onward uh, to the uh, last lap board. I do believe they're homeward bound. Race leader, no good thing. There's a bit happening here. So we ride now with Caleb Tat, the quickest lapper out there. He still holds the fast lap time. Although a 154.29 from John Fitzgerald is no slouch whatsoever. The gap between first and second says it's 1.3, but that looks like a very small 1.3. Let's check it out as they come through that right hand to come down off the height of the berm and send it off that drop off. Yeah, they're going absolutely hard and fast down the hill. Fitzgerald was standing the, uh, the pressure from Tat, but uh, a three lap sprint, you just don't have any time to make mistakes. I thought he made a little mistake in this uh, right hand bend here. He stood up and probably lost a bit of momentum. Uh, still on the pegs, which is a good thing, but I fancy he probably dropped off the pace in, as far as the throttle's concerned. It allowed Fitzgerald to get away. So all the work to do. Uh, Callum Tack uh, still chasing hard. John Fitzgerald in front from Foley, Hill, Thomas, Cleary, Gildrap, O'Grady, leg and Brax Chetwin back there in 10th position. Uh, homeward bound, the majority of the race uh, is homeward bound. Now most of the riders on the last lap board, there might be one or two left, but generally speaking they're all, all homeward bound. That's a good thing. So pretty much spread out over the entire circuit. There's 50cc bikes as far as the eye can see. And it's a beautiful thing. The wind actually coming up the hill for a moment there. You got that two stroke smell. There's uh, nothing quite like it. Yeah, and they're doing a good job out there. These little guys, they're all serious racers. Uh, it's learning your craft, but they're a bit more serious than they should be race sometimes. Leader, Here's our race winner, checkered flag. Well done. Uh, I think you'll find it was uh, John, John Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Uh, won the race, Caleb Tack in second. Uh, gonna go for third to Evan Foley, Bam Hill, Noah Thomas, Mason Cleary, all home. Gill trap, sorry, in, in, in front of uh, Cleary, who's finished now in seventh. 
Eighth, Jackson O'Grady. Ninth, Brax Chetwin. And we're looking for tenth as it comes up with a flag. I've got Rocky Leg here and Goodo. That's Great it. That's stuff. That's all she wrote. Well done, riders. That's a fantastic effort by you, little guy. Uh, you tried hard and went as hard as you could for the entire day. And uh, just wonderful to watch. Good spectacle. 65cc, 10s to under 12s are next. We are going to see you come out for a three-lap sprint. It's going to be fast. It's going to be short. It is going to be absolutely action-packed. We'll be back in just a moment. Congratulations to our champion, John 23rd Collins. We are go! That 20 lap final, Nick Lowe with a shocking start again. Corey Minchin, your KJT final winner. Off the start away, it looks like Kevin has really got a good back up there. On him, right up beyond him, about a half. Between fifth and six, it's Turner with a big mistake. If it's tough, he comes out the gate like a bolt of light.
of racing, if you have finished racing for the day, make sure you drop it into the transponder return crate. There is one underneath the blue live timing trailer. And there is normally, I believe there is a crate in the exit chute for you to take your transponder off your bike and drop it in there, easy as. Sixty five CC tens to under twelves are away from the gate. Gee, the fast movers are definitely fast. Up onto the high line, and it's the flying mob Deegan Fort leading us out. But man, oh man, Mason Brown, geez, he had some quick speed, takes that high line and gives chase to the 102 rider. We see 202 Angus Faye holding on for dear life in third place, Dave. Now, Mason Brown's close enough here, so uh, three laps sprint, is that what we've got? Three. Yeah, so three laps. So uh, Mason Brown got a good start. Deacon Fort got a good start. So Mason Brown got ahead. Oh, there's a bad one. Yeah, it's right a bad spot. Oh. oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, Rider down in front of us here, so we'll need uh, first aid, I would think. Right in front of the commentary. Ryland Johnstone. Yeah. Ryder hasn't moved a whole lot, so uh, obviously had uh, quite a moment there. If we can get some first aid to the commentary. Yep, they're onto it. Here we go. So here we go. We've got uh, Medicaid on their way. Yep. So yellows being waved in the area just to warn Two. riders. Two, I think it's uh, Ryland Johnston. It is, by the, looks the 259. Of it, and has not moved a whole lot. And they picked him up. There we go. Okay, so uh, riders off, uh, laying down, and I imagine we'll uh, be able to get you some sort of an idea of how that looks in a while. Uh, as we speak, we've got Mason Brown. He has stretched his legs, got away from the uh, little flying mop. That is. Uh, Deegan Fort, those two have stretched away some more, so we've got three laps and it's looking good for a one-two finish as we speak for those two riders. So uh, not much of, uh, of this race that you can say too much about at the minute. Mason Brown uh, leading Deegan Fort. I've got Angus Fay 202. Uh, and uh, who else have we got up amongst them there? Perhaps Levi Farr. Yeah, so we'll get to uh, some absolutes when they come back around and, and greet us again. Here we go. Mason Brown has popped into view on the final corner. He'll hit that last jump uh, and take a lap. Oh, wow, ladies and gentlemen. How about it? He's going back for the bike. The 259 rider, that is Ryland Johnstone, yeah, is back on. on the bike. Well, that's a good thing. That is a real good thing. We've had no major inju injuries that we're aware of. Wow. Uh, didn't look too bright, but there you go. He's got back on. So we've got, uh, they're on uh, lap two of a three-lap journey. Race leader, Mason Brown. He's checked out of the moto. He's right out there in front. Uh, Deegan Fort, the flying mop. He's a blue crew rider, uh, and he is doing the business on the little Yamaha. Uh, we go back to the next rider along. That should be James Egan and Wilbur. That's a nice ride. Right? There we go. Uh, by him and Levi Farr also. So we have two laps left to go on the counter. It's probably closer to a lap and a half of this three-lap sprint in the 65cc. <laughs> Tends to under oh 12s. Oh, the bike. young no, fellas. No, 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 no. Trying to push a bike. Ouch. Over on turn one. And you can see he's a, a broken husk of a kid there. Yeah. He's tried so hard. Yeah, that is that is absolutely demoralising. Trying to push the bike along, trying to push it up a hill. Hasn't had a real good day in, uh, <laughs> as far as uh, physical fitness is concerned. Just needs another workout, not. <laughs> <laughs> so we continue here. This is race 25. We've got five left after this. 
Right on, so the race to lead it. Still going along quite tightly in front, Mason Brown. He's the lamplighter. Leads him out, leads him out in a comforting uh, sort of situation. Got a handy break. Uh, he's peeling off 218 as we go for two. Uh, 216, sorry, back to Deegan Ford at uh, 222, and then Daylight back to James Egan and Warburton at a 229, Levi Fine at 232, uh, and we've got um, uh, Jax Wilkinson at a 231, probably should work his way through. Nobody else in that sort of category. No. Uh, that's the way they circulate. Last lap board will come out directly as I speak. It there it happen. is. We're homeward bound up front. We follow on with your race leader, Mason Brown, on the 658 machine through turn two. Takes that high line. Nice and smooth over these rollers. You'll see him. Doesn't lock the rear up. Still runs that high line there, letting the suspension do the work for him. Hammer down as he shoots on into this right-hander. Again, with the high line. Carries it through very, very nicely. He shoots out of frame. And we look to pick up second place, Deegan Fort on the 102. Here he is. You can spot him from a mile off with that hair peeking out from underneath the helmet. Deegan Fort has acquitted himself incredibly well today on that Yamaha. He has gone toe to toe with the very best in the 65s. And at times he's come out on top. Watch the form. He's up high in the saddle, over that little tabletop, into the right-hand hairpin, he comes. He's got nothing really but clean air in front of him. The gap to P1, currently some almost 11 seconds with Mason Brown. But still, Deegan has his head down, bum up, and he's putting in work. Drops down into that left-hander, into the tabletop. It's a big jump for a kid on a small bike. And streaks his way down towards Southwest Highway. Top gear pinned to the stop, letting that suspension soak up the bumps on this Yamaha across the backside of the track. Hard to pick him out through the, through the dust and the sunlight where it is. But across he goes. It's the fastest section of the track, the biggest air, the longest jumps. He'll come back into view. In just a moment, there is a waved yellow flag across the back section and another Medicaid request. Yeah, another, so the buggy will be moving off. off. Another get off over the back there. Uh, we've got the uh, medic alert people uh, on deck. Uh, race leader can't be far away. There's some carnage all of a sudden. That's what happens uh, late in the day. The track gets a bit rough and the boys uh, still want to twist the throttle, get a little bit untidy and uh, there she goes. Okay, so we're homeward bound well and truly in front and our race leader, as we said, was Mason Brown, Deegan Fort, James Eggett and Warman and Levi Farr. That's the top four. Uh, we must have a chequered flag very shortly indeed. That ride has come off at a tricky spot. Might make it just a little bit hard. Uh, there it is out now. Chequered flag done and dusted. So Mason Brown's a winner. Uh, Deegan Ford in second, the Flying Mops got second. Uh, James Egerton, uh, Egerton Warburton cannot be far off a chequered flag as they administer some first aid to a fallen rider. Chequered flag for that rider there, so that's James uh, Egerton. I think that's his best result for the day. Third, excellent work. Waiting for Levi Farr, Jax Wilkinson, uh, Albie Reeves, Seth Cleary. So we've got Albie uh, in sixth, we've got Jack Wilson, Wilkinson uh, in fifth. We've got seven, uh, sixth, yeah, Albie Reeves. Uh, seventh was Reese Beenham, that's a good finish for him, top ten. Uh, waiting for a couple more to come along. Not many riders that located on the circuit right now and still circulating. Looks like they've got that rider off the track, so that's a good thing. And uh, we should have uh, Joel Leach. Uh, according to what, what we read on the screen here, rounding up the top 10, that's all she wrote, race 25. The 125, oh, the 125 is coming out next. This will be a five lap, one of the longest or the longest race in this third and final round for round two of the Smarter Than Smoking 2021 Junior State Motocross Championship here at Lightweight Motorcycle Club in the heart of Byford. It has been our pleasure to bring you the action today, not just here at the venue, but also live, thanks to Four Style Media.
The 125s, arguably the quickest and most exciting category out here today, are about to tear it up. And they're pretty keen to go. It looks like uh, the best part of uh, 30 riders on the grid. Uh, we should watch for uh, 68, Patrick Butler, uh, Deacon Pace from 21, and Dylan Walsh, who has been to testing material on the gas gas all day. Bike number 61, 44, Jake Rumens. Uh, they'll be the four that should get going, and they need to get going fast. It's only uh, five laps. That is just a lap over a sprint, and uh, a poor start here could be costly but to make sure they get it right. So we're just waiting for one little rider to come along now. A little bit more water on the track's not going to hurt. Here we go, check and flag for our last rider. Green flag will be imminent and a start not that far away. Okay, they check everything. Make sure the goggles are on, the gloves are on, the helmet's done. Everything looks good, field a clutch, go for a little bit of a uh, tweak with the uh, throttle. All looking good, have a bit of a look down. Preparation, important here, concentration. Holding them there for a minute. I don't think there's any other riders out there that I'm aware of. And... Uh, we're just looking for a green flag. Didn't see it anywhere. Yeah, it could have been. Not sure. Not sure indeed. Anyway, it'll only be a matter of time before they let them flick. So we will just go into a little bit of a holding pattern as I can see what looks like oh, a bike okay. getting pushed off. Uh, we'll be back in just oh, a short here, yes. moment. Won't be long. Good spotting, son. Good spotting. We are away. Watch him fly into turn one. Oh, that was a big impact there in turn one. He's straight up. And we check our race leader as they come around on the 21. That's Deacon Pace, closely followed by Sonny Pelicano. The 226 of Adam Fuster leads out the 282 of Alex Watkins. That's your top five in that order as they fly through the air. Through they come. Oh, we've knocked the top off a sprinkler just to add a little bit of chaos. And uh, wow, that's spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. So we've got volunteers on scene. I don't exactly know what they intend to do about that because that looks like a main pressure leak. <laughs> There's something you don't see every day at the motocross event. A geezer. Wow. <laughs> Somebody struck it. Yeah, My we got what, no fireworks here today. It's all waterworks. Wowie, wowie, wowie. What do we do? So last time we checked them out, in first, we saw Deacon Pace with Sonny Pelicano right behind him. Adam Fuster in third. Ricky Edwards in fourth with Alec Watkins yeah. in fifth that, place. A, sorry, mate, but I think there's a rider there. I'm not sure whether he's hit the sprinkler or not, but the, the bike's there. Uh, and a rider on the ground, so it could well be. Yeah, not sure what he picked up there. Anyway, the race is going, uh, and we've got a race leader. Uh, I'm going to guess and say Sonny Pelicano for the hat, but I could be wrong, <laughs> but certainly he's up amongst them. Uh, race leader, according to his deacon, pay Sonny Pelicano, Fiesta, uh, Edwards, Watkins, Butler, uh, Walsh, Rumens, Devery, Pitter, Bartlett. That's the first 11 as I see them on the screen here. 
and uh, we've had, fortunately, they've managed to turn the geezer off, so that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's a nice little puddle there that's not going to cause... Well, I don't know. Is it going to no? Not going to cause too much grief. No, it'll it's be interesting. It. It's we just did make a bit of a wet day of it. So here we go. Sonny Pelicano challenging for second place, but Dylan yeah. Walsh has managed to hold that one down. Pelicano up the inside. Has he got what it takes? They flash yeah. around. This is actually the battle for third place. Yeah. I tell you what, I can't speak too highly of Deacon Pace's efforts for the day. Oh, you know, hasn't he's he been up amazing. The point of the I don't know how many bikes he's ridden on today, but he's still out there. He's still cracking away. He's still in front. Uh, and it's all go. All systems go through the water lake flat. Oh, it's all happening here uh, at uh, Byford in this last uh, 125 event. They're all going all over the place. We've got more flag down the bottom. Have a look at this. This is an incredible patch of racing. And it's going to live on the dust. So we've just identified that rider, rider 460. And I would say, actually 450, I'd say that's Ricky Edwards, Dave. Good news, he's up. He's looked at the bike. I got a sneaking suspicion he's even going to have a crack at it again. So they're pretty, they breed them tough up here. They really do. Uh, you come off, you hurt yourself, there's no blood. Uh, let's get back on the bike and let's go again. So that's what's happening. We have a uh, Medicaid request yeah, down, down in the, the bottom, bottom of the track. Yep. So the buggy's on its way over to there. And I've got to say, it's amazing just how much water got pumped out onto the track in yeah. such a short <laughs> amount of time. <laughs> We've got a torrent down here. My goodness. Yeah, that's going to sort them out. We're going to go from uh, bone dry, dusty conditions to a complete... A sinkhole. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, this is the one, two, fives, and they're out there uh, on the circuit. Uh, I'd imagine our race leader was Deacon Pace, but I'm going to tell you, Dylan Walsh cannot be that far away. Sonny Pelicano is still there. I get Jake Rumens in fourth now, according to the, uh, the screen that I've got here. So let's have a look when they come back around. Not sure what the situation is right now. I see Luke Davis uh, putting in a little bit of exercise uh, there as he runs his way off the track. Okay, so we've got a yellow flag again. What's happened here? So we have installed a yellow flag prior to the oh, wet well area done. just to try and slow riders down through that sector. And this has been absolute chaos. Dylan Walsh is your quickest lapper out there. He's done a 2.03.56, and he's riding behind Deacon Pace. The gap was some 2.4 seconds last time they flashed across the stripe. Yeah, I mean, uh, Dylan Walsh at a 2.03, leader at a 2.04. I don't know there's enough laps uh, for him to get past, but boys, here we close. And... Uh, Spare a thought for the riders. What a wise thing they are. Not too many of them gone straight through the middle, as I speak, three dead. Yeah. The others went very close <laughs> to the other side and almost didn't wash at all. So and th This is the thing, though. You hit a puddle like that at yeah. full pelt, all of a sudden it's going to feel like all the power's gone out. It's going to nose over. You're almost going to want to headbutt the handlebars. Yeah, and it's going to pull at your handlebars. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's not unlike hitting a brick wall in some ways. Uh, they run through it quite nicely, but, yes, it's a bit of danger. And uh, there is an issue there, so uh, the riders have got to be made aware of it. And well done to the track officials. Out with the yellow flag. Gives them an opportunity. So racing continues on as we try and pick out who we've got on screen on our Four Style Media live stream. It's the 68, I believe. Still a yellow flag down the bottom there, but uh, at the moment, I think we've still got uh, rider number 21, Deacon Pace, in front, have we? Yes. Uh, in the uh, the red jersey, he comes back around. So we've got five laps, so they're on three and five. So we've got two to go. And I think, honestly, I think that uh, the rider in second, Dylan Walsh, uh, in a 2.02. Oh, I was going to say he can catch him up, but I don't know. Now, well, they're both, not much between them. They've both they're just clocked in 2.02s. Yes. And that's a sign of just how hard these guys are pushing. Yeah, Deacon Pace has decided to, to lift the pace, if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, Realise there's a, a, a challenge. And he's, uh, he's risen to the top, as they do, good riders. And he is now on a march. I reckon that's a uh, pretty good break right now. Here we go. Watch on. 
And there, that's what it's like, hitting that, that heavy puddle of water. It really slows you up. Yeah, it does, absolutely. See him send it down, that step off, disappear into the dust. Hard to see as they're obscured from our camera. But around the right hand, uh, belting back up the hill they come. Yeah, I think right of preservation from here on in. Basically, yeah, you have to think that's front of mind because yeah. these are super tough conditions to try yeah. and ride in, let alone race. Yeah, I mean, uh, vision's an issue, water on the track. Uh, one has to be very careful here. Oh, that one there, just what you said. The front wheel hit, the back wheel came up, almost like a brake bump. <coughs> so pace is coming back to us now uh, in the middle of the circuit, still going nicely. I thought the second rider in uh, Walsh might have been just a whisker closer, but one lap to go will be very interesting indeed. Eight minutes have been spent on this course. These guys have had a massive day of riding. Watching on the triple one of Sonny Pelicano doing everything he can to try and get up onto the back of Dylan Walsh. Pelicano, I mean, geez, he's like six, six seconds away. One lap to catch him up, and there's not much distance here. Uh, Walsh has a big chance here. Uh, Dylan Walsh uh, at 2.01. So he's wow. two sec he was two seconds quicker that lap than uh, the guy in front. So there's a chance. There's a Oh, he's done it all wrong there. Damn it. Well, let's watch them as they shoot in front of our commentary position. We ride now with Dylan Walsh on the 61. Fires it off oh, that right-hander. Thank you very much. Through the water. Walsh trying to hunt down Deacon Pace, who is riding like a man possessed. Down the hill they go, over the tabletop. Keep the altitude low. Walsh drops right in behind him. But Pace had a really good launch off that right-hand hairpin. Was able to pull a little bit of a gap as they come through the rollers back up the hill, Dave. Yes, indeed. I'm watching these guys go through this big puddle right in front of it. It's like you say, it's just like a break now. It's built up and built up, and a couple of them hit it, and the back ends wanted to come up. It's just like pulling on the handbrake on the front. But at the moment, our race leader's not going to have that problem. Uh, he's down on the highway part of the uh, circuit, uh, being chased very hard. Let's have a look and see what's happened. I've got to see his vision pace is just still in front. Uh, see if we can pick him out. Here we go, yes, he watching is. on so screen. Lap riders, lap riders, here we go. This could be a chance. Pace got around, and guess what? Walsh did not. That is going to be the end of the penny section, I do believe. Uh, one rider came in between the pair of them, and uh, I think Dylan Walsh is going to have to put the queue in the rack. Let's just see. Not much of it to, uh, to go now, although he's got back on board. Gee, that chasing hard. The gap currently sits at about a second between first and second, but it's going to go right down to the wire. Deacon Pace leads out Dylan Walsh on the 61. Who's going to have this second, or rather this third moto? Oh, he was trying to put the block pass on him. Dylan Walsh couldn't get it done. It slowed him up, and Deacon Pace surely going to run away yeah, with the third moto victory. Congratulations and a job well done. Deacon Pace. Yeah, super work. Super work, Deacon Pace. Very hard charging. Dylan Walsh just failed to make the, uh, the, the gap up. And uh, I think you'll find back in there with Sonny Pelicano uh, in third. Rumors in fourth, according to this. Not sure whether that's right. Uh, then we've got Max Devery, Alec Watkins, Travis Pitter, uh, Taj Reed, Braden Upperton, and rounding out the top ten, Luca Romano. What a super, super race that was. I gotta say, although he got left behind by the front runners, Sonny Pelicano on that triple one machine did an absolutely awesome job staying out of trouble, staying out ahead of Jake Rumens, and bringing home third in that third and final moto, race 26. Now this is going to be very interesting. I'm not 100% sure if that leak is still continuing uh, or if we're just seeing yeah, in fact, uh, I think that we are just slowly filling that section of the track. So we'll await our clerk of course's decision on how he wishes to proceed, as this has now become a water hazard. Normally something that you see uh, on the golf course. So we're gonna crank the tunes and we will be back with more information as it comes to hand. This has been an absolutely thrilling turn of events here at round two 
for the 2021 Smarter Than Smoking State Motocross Championships here at Lightweight Motocross Club.
While we have a moment of relative quiet, we would like to remind all riders that if you have finished riding for the day, you need to take your transponder off your machine and return it. There will be a transponder return crate in the exit chute. There will also be one underneath the blue AP timing trailer. Please take your transponder off your machine and put it in the transponder return crate. We're still awaiting a decision on what to do with this water hazard we have out on track. We'll keep you posted. But at the moment, it's looking like a fantastic time to come on up to the bar and grab yourself a drink. So, our riders are in the hands of the starter and that would indicate that a start is imminent. 65s, 7s to under 10s are off the gate. We are away. Now, this is going to be epic. Watch them as they hurdle into turn one. 4.37 out in front. And across the start finish line, Nate Tomarini leads us out. Now, this is going to be interesting. He fires his way over the first of the rollers. The Yamaha on song. Tomarini has had a pretty much clean sweep. And here we go around the right hander. Let's see how this goes. Dodges it off to the side. Okay, there is a little bit of a line there that they can take. Yeah, they've obviously figured that out very and truly, but that one there straight through. Holy dooly. That's an angle. Oh. Okay. Oh. There's going to be some, Oh, well, that's, that's going to move a fair bit in a hurry. Yep. <laughs> I'd be pretty surprised if those bikes continue to go through that, to be really honest. These Any are case? going to be a pretty incredible set of photos as we see hot headers and expansion yep. chambers hitting that. Yep. that water, yeah, uh, the so. photographer that gets that backlit sunlight sunset shot yeah, is going to uh, sell some photos. Epic photo. So Nate Tomarini leads out Ollie Burkett with Max Chetwin, uh, Brax Chetwin rather, in third place, Nate Hardbottle in fourth, and Charlie Butler in fifth as they make their way up over the tabletop. This is a three-lap sprint, Dave. It's a short, sharp run right to the finish. Yeah, and anybody who doesn't get a good start is going to be in a fair amount of bother here. Uh, that's probably as good a position as Bra Brax Chetman's been in all day in third. Uh, Ollie Burkett and Nate Tomarini have been the protagonists for most of the day. Uh, Charlie Butler up there amongst them. Corey Shackleton are not far away either. Uh, haven't seen too many down the track that shouldn't be up the point yet. Oh, Caleb Tat back in 14th. Not sure why he's back that far, but I expect him to come through. Watching on, we are, funnily enough, we are still trying to put water onto certain areas of the track just to try and keep that dust down, especially as the sun gets closer to the horizon. Yeah, exactly, and that's going to be a, going to be a trap for all concerned, I do believe. Uh, Nate Tomarini has done particularly well in this class for the entire day and deserves, thoroughly deserves to be uh, in the lead here. Uh, the way he's been riding, I'd expect to see that uh, after three laps, he's still up the front. Uh, he's pinched a little bit of a break. Oli Burkett's chased very hard indeed. He's rolling in second. Uh, those two riders are cleared out. Next one uh, along, uh, it says Brax Chitwin uh, on uh, three, 
99, but we'll check the numbers as they come around. Have no doubt that could be very right. Uh, and uh, these are 65 cc's, and with that puddle of water, it's going to make things quite interesting as they go driving through that. Yep, still Brax Chetwin. Uh, then we go to 210. That's Charlie Butler. I'm looking, oh, Caleb Tate. He was back in 14th, so he's on a charge up to 6th. Not a bad uh, laps work for Caleb Tat. Able to get some decent passing done in that first lap of the race. And a lot of our riders have wised up. They're taking that extreme wide right line through the water hazard. And here we go. Big move there from the 130. Looking to put the pass down. That is Nate Dalton doing it on Ryder Boland. Got it done. Yeah, a bit of an early preparation for uh, winter time, eh? Yeah, yeah why so not? Put a big puddle in the track. Everybody run through it, see how we get on. <laughs> yeah, some of them don't seem to mind at all. They just go roaring straight through the middle. Not, no problem. I'd be inclined to go one side or the other and try not to get hit, uh, into yeah, the water, but, but still. You're not, not a bike. kid. You're not a kid nah, riding right. a 65 nah, who probably right. thinks it's absolutely awesome to go through puddles, mate. Yeah, yeah, straight up the middle. Let's let it rip, see how it goes. Okay, race leader uh, should be down in the bottom section of the circuit. Uh, Nate Tomarini doing 222s. Uh, Ollie Burkett at 226. Uh, Brax Chetwin on 235. Uh, down the page, I'm just looking to see. No, nobody uh, is, uh, is quicker than that. So Caleb Tad up to into six, but he's still on a um, uh, 249. So uh, pretty hard work out there for these little bikes so late in the day, and they're doing a great job. Nate Tomarini clocking in with a 2 minute 22.887. Let's see if he's got the chops to go quicker this time around past the starter. Here we go. Cruising in around that final corner. Hammer down. And he is on the throttle stops. Goes through for a 223.7. Ollie Burkett looking good with a 222.34. That is super quick for Ollie. Fastest lap out there. Currently 2.87 seconds behind P1. Style check there for Nate Tomarini. Gets this Yamaha turned in. Avoids the water. Just gets a splash of it. Ollie Burkett trying to give chase. It's a, almost a clear day between second and third. Brax Chetwind on the 399, currently under fire from the 210 of Charlie Butler on the gas gas. See how this shapes up. Butler able to make some gains there as they approach the water hazard. We watch on as into the tabletop looks like the 610 of Ollie Burkett. We're watching on our live stream. Welcome if you are watching. This is the dying stages of round two of the 2021 Smarter Than Smoking Junior State Motocross Championship here at Lightweight. And Ollie Burkett absolutely flying. This little 65 being pushed within an inch of its life. Rounds that left-hander. Into the tight section. Arguably, these 65s and even the 85s are the quickest machines through this sector of the track. An incredible power to weight ratio on them. And when you get a rider who's not afraid to crack that throttle all the way to the stop, these things can absolutely fly. There we go, man. Sorry, I, I was doing a little bit of work on the phone. My room is online <laughs> auction, so it closes at five, so it's all, all uh, system to go for me. But the boys out here are doing a fantastic job, uh, and uh, this race is coming down to a successful conclusion. Checkered flags are out, and we should have our race winner right there. Good work. Good work indeed. So, uh, Nate Tomarini, what a fantastic job. He should go into the pits absolutely excited by what he's done today. It's been an absolutely splendid effort uh, for him. He, as you say, park the bike in the park for me for everybody to have a look at it. Uh, then we go to uh, Ollie Burkett. Can't be far away off, uh, off a checkered flag. 
Brax Chetwin, that'll be his best finish he can hold on the third, 3.99. We wait for those riders to come along and uh, we're uh, getting the event down to a very successful uh, conclusion. There they go now. So we have got Brad Steppen, well done. He did get third in front of Charlie Butler. Ollie Burkett got second. So those uh, four riders have done exceptionally well. And dare I say it, uh, Caleb Tate, who was languishing out in 14, has fought his way back through in three laps to fifth. What a super ride. Well done indeed. So we should move on to the next moto. Uh, after Tab, we'll just give you a run now. Uh, Tom Marine from Burkett, uh, Chedwin Butler, Tat, Bam Hill in sixth, Shackleton Corey, that is, in seventh, eighth, John Fitzgerald, ninth, Noah Thomas, round out the top ten, Ryder Boland, that's the way they went, event 27. We should move on uh, to the next event, which I believe is uh, 250s. Am I right? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Oh, girls 250s, yeah, okay. So the girls 250s, and they've got four laps. Four laps of the uh, lightweight 